And uh, just for anybody that doesn't know me that listen to this, uh, my name is Ellie Cohen. I'm a medical Qigong practitioner and energy healing coach. I've been doing this for 10 years. And uh, uh, this is I think, well, Adam told me yesterday, this is the 44th uh, Chi talk. So <laughs> it's almost a year that we're doing it. Wow. <laughs> Many talks. So it really started with the, uh, with the whole uh, pandemic, you know, and, and trying to kind of spread the words of health and healing and, and, uh, and really uh, a lot of time in classes, I find that I'd like to talk more. I like to explain a little bit more, but we are in class. So uh, this is uh, this is such a great uh, venue to kind of explain a little bit more about Chinese medicine behind the scene, the philosophy, uh, and also kind of the internal practices that goes within. So today we're talking about um, breath, breath practice in Chinese medicine, and uh, and a little bit more in detail. Um, how do we see it in Chinese medicine and and in Qigong? Before we start, let's uh, let's begin with a, a little bit of a ceremony. And here, Ryan joining us. Ryan, good to see you too. Wow, we have a great group. Thank you guys for showing up. We'll try to make this one a really good one. <laughs> so uh, let's uh, let's start with a little ceremony so we're all on the same page. So if you will, let's just close our eyes and come into the body. So when we kind of come into the body, we just feel the form and shape of the body as we sit here. I think everybody's sitting, so just feel the... I always like to start with the earth. It feels very grounding. So just feel the feet on the floor, the sit bone on the chair, and just give way to gravity. Yeah, this is in Chinese and uh, Qigong. This is a process called Song La, S O N G L A. So Song La means relaxation and also sinking down. Sinking down is giving way to gravity, aligning yourself with the force underneath you. Yeah, so we erect the spine to uh, so we don't. Yeah, if we have a good posture. Yeah, the, we don't have to carry so many tensions. Yeah, we, we have a good posture, a vertical posture. We can align ourselves with this force that's called gravity. And we need less muscular tension to hold ourselves up. So see if you can kind of find a posture, a, a form that feels kind of upright, but also relaxed. The belly is relaxed, the chest, the shoulders, the face. And also, notice that with no effort on your part, the body is, uh, is breathing. And as we notice that, we obviously move our attention to it, to that sensation of breath in the body, wherever it's most compelling to you. And where is it most compelling to you to feel the breath? Where is the first place you notice? Let's see if you can move your attention to different areas of the body. You can still feel the breath there. without really changing the breath, just noticing the breath as it is. And going to some areas that the breath is not so obvious there. As we're becoming more quiet and more in tune with our body, we eventually, maybe not in this session, but we eventually will feel that the whole body 
is breathing and anywhere we put our attention to, we can feel the breath. As we increase our sensitivity to our energy, to our chi. And what else do we feel in the body? And just open to receive all of the different sensation without judgment, without pushing anything away. Let's notice also if which one is longer, the inhalation or the exhalation, as the body breathes itself naturally without, without your involvement. Every breath gives life to the body, to the cells. And the way we breathe reflects our emotional state, our mental state. And let's softly opening our eyes. Nice. Beautiful. Hopefully that was a little calming and kind of nice uh, to connect with with yourself kind of more intimately. And um, yeah, we need more of these, especially now when we're going towards the winter time when uh, things are going inwardly, there's more yin energy. It's uh, kind of like um, a, a time in Chinese medicine we call the fall time, a, a times of purification through reduction. So purification and creativity through reduction. So everything, all the trees losing their leaves in preparation for new life, for creation in the, in the new spring. So the idea of reduction, of letting go of the unnecessary is 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 actually creating new life so we are um we are being creative we are transforming ourselves we are reinventing ourselves by first kind of going through this process of reduction of uh so so always the the archetype of the fall is the alchemist you know how can we reduce how can we uh uh kind of uh, find what is the truth where is our truth and so seeking the truth and getting rid of what's not necessary is really kind of like um, in our life in our lifestyle it's kind of like the energy of the fall practice of um, of this time of the year so this is more like kind of like a questioning coming within <laughs> and connecting with the breath <clears throat> as it is and not changing the breath is really a way to um, uh, kind of being inquisitive of what is our truth? Where are we <laughs> listening to ourselves a little, a little more? And of course, in Qigong, a lot of time we do a practice that is with controlled breathing. We breathe in a certain way. <clears throat> and we breathe in a certain way to elicit something. And so the breath is very important in meditation. In many practices, the breath is very important because this is the only involuntarily action that happening in the body that we can control we cannot control our heartbeat we cannot control our digestive system some may be very advanced qigong master or yogis can can uh, 
control more of the in, involuntarily. But what's available to, uh, to everybody is to change the breath, even though it's happening on its own. And that's, um, that's why it's, the breath is the gateway to our subconscious mind. The breath uh, is being controlled by the limbic brain, the root of the brain, like the very old part of the brain. And that's where our stress response, our triggers are also being controlled. So our emotional energy is being controlled there. There's a book by Candice Pratt called The Molecule, Molecule of Emotions. Very interesting book about a scientist going out and checking, trying to understand what emotions are from a scientific standpoint. And what, what, what Candice Pratt found is that, you know, the emotions are being controlled by a very old part of the brain, like the fear, the fight or flight response. It's very, it's, uh, you know, your triggers, <laughs> it's really hard to control our trigger. We're just responding to life in a way that is, is very primal. And the breath is also, is also in the same place. That's the, that, that's what we change the breath. We change our emotions. It happens automatically together. And why, this is why we're, we can change the breath in Qigong. A lot of time we have breathing techniques in order to do a certain thing. Because we can, when we change the breath, we can change our emotion. We can change our mental state. Like what we did right now, we just listened to the breath. All of a sudden our nervous system, hopefully everybody feels it, is kind of calmed down and relaxed and we're feeling more in tune with ourselves. Because we always have a, some level of stress. <laughs> some level of stress is always there. And um, like right now, I'm on stage, basically. There is a certain amount of, like my liver is working a little harder than if I would be like just sitting on the couch resting. <laughs> so the liver is the one to control, to actually, uh, uh, it, it, the, the liver is about the smoothness of chi in the body. So it really... Uh, it, it really works in emotional changes. Yeah, so it, 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 this is why people that drink a lot of alcohol, the liver is being very toxic and their emotions are also very, very wavy. People that drink or under a lot of intoxication on their medication, different medication, different substances, the liver is working too hard and cannot uh, control the evenness of the emotions. So, uh, so we always under some level of stress and the breath reflects that. <clears throat> and when you come and you listen to the breath as it is, not how you like it to be, but as it is, you're in tune with how you are feeling. You're accepting, quote unquote, you're accepting how you feel. And when you accept your state as it is, <laughs> without pushing away any emotions, all of a sudden things starting to open up. So when we are not in a place of resistance, <clears throat> the energy start to flow. And this is really the premise of Qigong. How can we be, be in the flow? Ac acceptance, be in the place of acceptance, what's come our way, how we feel, acceptance of how we feel on a deeper level. And the, um, the breath would reflect that. So listen to the breath would reflect that. Now changing the breath would also be a technique to change how you feel and it's it's very easy to um and and in qigong we have a you know we have a we have a protocol there's there's a <laughs> there's a text that was written by the yellow emperor the yellow emperor was responsible for writing all the all this all the all chinese medicine all the stuff that they found <clears throat> the ancient masters in 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 books yeah so the yellow emperor really responsible for having all this uh, information available to, to us now, even acupuncture and all this Chinese medicine. And, and the breath, there was a lot of talk about the breath and there were different types of breathing and there were actually for different, different types of energy. So we have to first discern between yin and yang. You understand that inhaling is yin, <laughs> is taking the life in. You can say yin is in. <laughs> it's easy to remember. Yeah. So when we are when we are inhaling, we are taking life in. That's the first thing we do as we as we as we born. When a baby born, 
the first thing it does, it takes a breath in, it takes life in. And a lot of times, um, qi is called life breath. So really the connection between breath and qigong is very strong. Yet the breath, we say by the breath, we can control, direct, release, gather qi. So the breath is very, very important. And uh, so, so life breath, yes. Yeah? So the first thing is to discern between yin and yang. The yin is, is taking the breath in, the yang is, is exhaling out. So by that, we can, we can know if we're more yin, more yang, you know, and the emotions re would reflect that. So let, let's say an emotion like anger would be much more exhalation and inhalation. Uh, so a person is very hot. Yeah, when you are very young, when you're exhaling more rapidly than inhaling, you don't want to take life in, you don't want to take other people's opinion in, you want to exhale, you want to push your opinion out, you want to be the right person. <laughs> so you, when your person is angry is exhaling, is really uh, want to him, his opinion to stick. Yeah, and the opposite side, the, the people that is sad, the person that is sad, it doesn't want to it, it doesn't want to exhale so it inhales much more because it doesn't want to you know it's a it's a it's a breath of loss yeah if i lost something and i don't want to lose it i keep it in yeah when you are in a fear what people do right they say take air in they go in why because they're in a fear so they, they don't let wanna wanna so they wanna keep things in. When you're in a state of uh, depression or sadness, is the same. So so the Qigong master saw that that there's actually breathing pattern, the different emotions, the different and and also the temperature of the body changes when you inhale when you exhale. Yeah, like when you inhale, you are cooler. You're much cooler. Yeah, if you do this a lot of time, you'll feel cold <laughs> and your lower back will be cold, your kidney, because there's a fear connected to the kidney. So it's very interesting. And then, and then the hot, the young will be more hot, the exhalation, yeah, the people that are angry are hot. <laughs> Usually when you're angry, you're very warm. <laughs> So, uh, so that's why I said it last time we talked about um, depression and uh, Gail talked about anger and how anger can mobilize depression. And that, I thought that was very interesting because the heat also changed the temperature and pressure changed in the body. So we see, so also from a physical standpoint, it's an interesting, it's an interesting uh, kind of suggestion. You know, Gail mentioned it two, two or a few weeks ago. But anyway, so this is... Uh, so, so we, we want to know how, how to breathe if we want to go down, go to sleep. If we want to wake up in the morning, go to do some jogging and how do we, how do we energize the body with the breath? Yeah. So all these things become very hand, handy when we are, when we are trying to do this and that. So it's very, it's very good to, uh, uh, to, to learn it, to know that because it's a tool that you can use. Now in Qigong, what we do is we adding another level into it and we are doing movement with the breath. And there's, and that, and that really, so if we were talking about Qi is being, is being controlled by the breath and the breath, yeah, that's, that's uh, what we're doing in Qigong is really healing the whole body. So we're focusing on an area and breathing to it or opening a certain joint and breathing to it so that the movement and the breath, it, it becomes a little bit more, more uh, complex, if you will. And we're doing more things. So we have a, a, a certain pattern of breathing technique in Qigong. When we do purging exercise, there's a certain breath to this. When we do more of a flows, there's a certain breath that we do, right? And so sometimes I would guide you through it, like now breathe from the nose, now breathe, now sh now exhale, focus on exhalation, now focus on inhalation. So all of these are very, are very important in, in how to, to control your chi, control your energy. So it becomes actually um, a more, a more developed if just breathing by itself is kind of 
starting the engine, doing Qigong and incorporating the breath would be driving your car. Yeah, you could be, you could be doing a lot of things for your body. Yeah, because in Qigong, we also emit certain attitude, like we think about an area in a certain way. So that could also change. <clears throat> so the breath, so we piling on to this basic information more and more, more and more and and really incorporating into a whole practice so in general uh yeah now if if um yeah if you if you what we do like in for instance in the good night qigong we're lengthening the exhalation right we're lengthening the exhalation twice as much as the inhalation and then the nervous system after two minutes you just need two minutes it's been checked to kind of calm down the nervous system <laughs> when you exhale twice as long as inhaling. You inhale one, two, three, four, you exhale eight. Yeah, and, and if you want to energize or purge, <clears throat> if you're sick and want to purge, there's a certain breath that you do, a purging, a purging breath. So all of this we're doing as part of a Qigong practice in our classes every week. So this is, uh, um, this is kind of like, what I wanted to talk about, and I was also wanted to hear if there's any questions. I'm, there's it's a huge subject. I'm sure there's questions <laughs> to it. Uh, yeah, Carla. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, Ellie. I'm just so glad that you're oh, there. Uh, why I cannot hear you? Hold on. You Maybe my uh, let me just uh, see if my uh, volume is down. Okay, oh. can you can you try it again? Can you hear me now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, good, good. All right, so I have this question. It's a little confusing, but I've taught yoga for a long, long time out of the Vini yoga tradition. And in there, we, we exhale to relax, just like you said, good night, uh -huh. right. lengthen the exhale. But how come that's yang? Because I thought if you relax when you lengthen your exhale, I felt like that would be more yin because you're relaxing when you extend it. So can you say something about that? Yeah, no, that's very good. I mean, when you when you exhale, that that's very interesting, right? Yeah. So a lot of time, it's just think about the fear, the fear breath. It's more like holding it in and not letting it go. So that's more of like. Mm. <laughs> so actually, the relaxation, the the exhalation is more relaxing. It's kind of we going into like imagine they're going into a hot tub. What everybody does, <sighs> right? Right. They exhale, they relax. So that's letting more, go, right? Letting go. Yeah, oh. letting go is exactly, is exhale. And that's what we want to focus on the fall practice, letting go. Like the trees letting go of the leaves. So most of our practice um, in the fall, fall season would be uh, focusing on purging, like letting go, exhaling. Now, when, right. you ex when you exhale, when you exhale, it is more young. If you sit and exhale a lot, <sighs> exhale a lot, the rhythm also is very important, by the way, because if you are doing, because uh, you're a yoga teacher, so think about a fire breath. It's mostly exhalation, but what does it do? It energizes you. Yes. Oh, that's true. That's true. Right. And when, when, when a, a martial art is uh, punching, he exhales. Yeah. <sighs> right? And so that is a difference between soft, long exhalation mm -hmm. or a fast exhalation with power. Oh. Yeah. So that would be kind of like cooking. A lot of time, you know, when my old master was, was talking about cooking, <laughs> you know, you can cook like uh, on a walk, like flash heat, and that's very young, or you can steam rice. And a very long and, you know, like yeah. exhale from the mouth, but very, very slow. So our environment inside is like a, a cooking pot. It's like a pot. And the way you release and inhale air is controlling the pressure inside. This is, this is what we have, the, the Wei Qi breathing. We were talking about the longevity breathing and how to increase your pressure, your your Wei Qi, your guardian energy, and it all has to do with increasing the, the pressure inside of your pot, like your body is your pot. Mm -hmm. So it really depends. So I guess my, my answer would be it depends how you exhale. 
through the nose and long through the nose long I, I thought it would be letting go would be yin because you're relaxed but I guess not no yeah so so on the exhale the energy goes to the extremities ah. and so if you go and exhale a lot like a fire breathing right remember in uh, yoga and kundalini they do it you become what you become hot yes it you become hot. hot and you become energized you actually have more energy but if you exhale very softly and you focus on more exhalation but softly that would be very relaxing very calm uh, the opposite of energizing and more young so there's there's i guess it so that's that's a good question because it shows you that it's there's different ways of cooking. Yeah, <laughs> we can yeah, cook great. really. Cooking is a great example. Mm -hmm. We can, we can, uh, yeah, that was my teacher, it's not me. <laughs> oh, but it's but, so good. Yeah, no, I thought it's great. Yeah, because you can, you can steam rice, uh, but you can burn the rice. Yeah, you don't want to burn rice. So you, you burn, you, you, you put on the wok, you put the vegetables or something. So it d depends what you, wh what you want to do. And, and uh, this is why um, when you are in a hot tub, you do ah, and you relax, you exhale when you actually are in relaxation, but also you exhale when you are need to punch. <laughs> the martial artists actually, they checked it. When they do the sound and they exhale faster, the punch is stronger because the energy goes to the extremities on the exhale. And on the inhale, the energy goes inside. So when you cold in the winter, this is why everybody inhaling more. And as depression is associated with too much in, uh, inhalation, not a lot of exhalation. So, so inhale would keep the energy in. You don't want to lose energy. <laughs> so you take, you take it in, you take it in, you take it in, wow. you know? But actually in the winter, there's a practice, a Taoist practice. You want to exhale <sighs> and hit the body. You hit the body through exhalations. That's maybe too much in <laughs> too no, much no, it's information. So good. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> I'm trying to or, or like figure out yoga and qigong because mm -hmm. in our tradition, uh, when you want to energize or heal someone from allergies, you pause at the top of the in breath. So I'm just and you said that's yin. So I'm just maybe because you're gathering the chi in that that's I don't know. <laughs> yeah it depends it depends how uh, i my answer would be depends how you do every, how do you exhale and how do you inhale and the 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 uh the you know the the rhythm yeah. the how do, from the nose from the mouth and also in qigong the intention the intention can change a lot of things <laughs> if you want to let go you will let go if you want to whatever you yeah so but the the breath yeah the the in breath is yin taking life in the exhale the last thing you do when you when you before you die if you if you die peacefully you exhale the last thing you do you you exhale uh and you give life away and that's uh and that's young and uh so so that's that's kind of like uh, I hope it's not too confusing. I mean, I think oh, it's a big question. It's like it's <laughs> huge. It's like the question about life, really, the breath. It's an amazing thing. Mm -hmm. so thank you, thank you, because you've given me new insights. I and I never thought about the cooking <laughs> and, and how the breath goes out. You know, that's a huge difference whether you're yeah. going out the mouth. Oh, that's very important. Yeah, if we exhale in a certain way, we can energize. If we exhale in a different way, we can release. But um, uh, but all the things that you said are true. When we are when we are holding the breath, is that we are holding ten? We are. We are, you know, we, we don't let go. So really what we want to do is we want to, the, the good breath, like a good normal breath would be inhale deeply and exhale all the way out. Inhale deeply. When we take life in and when we, when we, when, when you compromise the inhalation, you don't want to take life in. You don't want to take new ideas. You don't want to take, you don't want to take life in. Yeah. And this is like an angry person, right? Doesn't want to take other people's opinion. So he exhale more. And when we exhale, <laughs> is that our ability to let go of the past. Inhale and exhale. 
So, um, <laughs> thank, thank you for this. That's you. that's uh, that's good. I like to I like questions that kind of like we're going deeper into. So, anybody else have some more questions or sharing? I, I do, Ellie. Uh huh. I have a question about um, breath as a way of healing. So, this past couple of years, I've been noticing doing the qigong with you and and using my breath more and other practices that have been healing organs and different parts of my body so you know it's helping my back and sciatica and lungs um uh, gall, uh other organs i can't remember now <laughs> appendix actually um i it, it completely receded something with my appendix and i'm curious about um arthritis like does it it can breath and, and maybe other movement too can mm -hmm. it rebuild cartilage or can it support um uh you know rebuilding something um if someone has arthritis mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah that's a that's a beautiful question it's very um it's it's really a, a very important question it's kind of like also what i'm curious about and what i do in kind of like more like uh one-on-one -on -one practice and the 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 que the answer to building stuff uh yes absolutely i was working with a person that um we were working on on cartilage actually on on tissue and and rebuilding tissue and uh the work is um the the work like i would say that the the breath is important but um in 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 that particular uh, the intention and the attention is very is even on a, a higher a higher importance than 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 the breath in this one uh you know i've been studying the medical qigong i actually started with medical i started with uh, you know i was hanging out with the teacher and many many people with severe chronic conditions like and and healed and so that was what what drew me into the practice in the beginning that actually that actually uh the miracle behind qigong for for healing and uh in that particular form we didn't use a lot of the breath it, we use the breath just to relax the body to calm down and to kind of get into a st elevated state and after we got into an elevated state and we can do it through different uh, breath methodology. So the breath was a tool to get to an relaxed and elevated state. And then we would hone more like intention and attention and uh, to a very high level, to a very high level. So really the ability to move your attention um, in a, in a very um very exact uh concise way from one place to another and visualize mm -hmm. and really getting into uh into the zone so to speak you know and for uh, for for a sustained extended lower period of time for for that for that healing and uh that would be very powerful sessions and so um so the breath is uh so the breath yes yeah, so that that without that my answer that for my experience um we use the breath as a tool to get into a certain mind state into a body state of openness elevated the heart mm -hmm. and we did a lot of work with the visualization and how to elevate the heart and all that and then we elicit the, our our chi with our attention and intention and um uh, so I hope is that yeah you answered the answer. question yeah. yeah so you know and there's a lot of stories um, of people that that healed uh, ama amazing um, bones and ligaments and uh, move bones in the body to a new location amazing things yeah. I've been uh, reading about about how uh, uh, the power of of your energy the power of your visualization so we work a lot with visualization with attention uh, to facilitate to facilitate healing in conjunction with the breath so the breath always started the practice 
if you come very distressed or very, um, if you have a very, like, let's say you want a person come with, with arthritis, let's say, and, or with cancer, and they really hate it. They really want to change the, they really have um, an aversion to where they are. That's, 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 that's going to be very difficult to heal. So you have to get into a place of acceptance and embracing where you are. And the breath helps. <laughs> you saw we did just the ceremony beginning and we mm -hmm. just felt a little bit more at ease. Yeah. So the breath would be the beginning of any energy practice for yeah. that matter. Does that make sense? Right. Yeah, it does. I'm, what I'm hearing at jives with my own practice is that the more uh, breath gets one, you one oh. second uh, Ryan can you say it again yeah um, what I'm hearing and it, it it resonates uh, with me and also just comports with my own practice is that the breath helps to get into a state where we can use subtle energy uh, to start an intention and start healing parts of the mm -hmm. body yeah and um and we can it doesn't mean that we 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 don't use the breath in in that in the healing session we we can do it uh there's actually the seven the seven uh type of breath in Taoism to re, to to do certain things and there's mm -hmm. a different way of inhaling and exhaling in each one of them and and how to do it and the rhythm and the, the, it's just very uh there's a lot, a lot about the breath. And so you can manipulate, you can do things uh, with the breath a lot. But specifically in medical Qigong, uh, my experience was, uh, was that there's added on visualization and intention and connecting with, this, with the universal energy. And there's more and more, uh, yeah. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Thank you, yeah, thank you so much. Oh, I love these questions, so beautiful. Okay, so uh, let's uh, let's close it here. Unless there's really somebody wants to like say something, because <laughs> we are already like uh, forty minutes in. Uh, so let's close our eyes and put the hands on the heart. Talking about elevating the heart energy, and just feel. See if you can feel the heartbeats. Can you feel the heart beating in your chest? And let's send a, a good energy to the heart. The heart is your is one of your kids. So let's send it love and appreciation. And inhale and exhale through the nose when we do that. Always when we inhale and exhale through the nose, we amplify the chi. So if you're in a good state of love and appreciation, you want to Amplify that. So the breath would be even and in and out through the nose. Mm -hmm. Nice. So let's open the hands and open the eyes. Beautiful. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for joining me in, in Chi Talk. And, uh, you know, you, you, you are part of it. You're really part of it. So thank you. Please come again. And thank you so much for contributing. A lot of people are listening to this, not only as a replay, but also as a podcast. The podcast called Awaken the Healer Within. And we have a lot of people listening to it. So <laughs> you are part of it, too. Thank you so much. Thank you, Ellie. I'll see you. Thank you. I'll see you in class. Bye, yeah. everybody. Thank you.
See you.